I want to talk to you this morning about surviving your own vision. <laughs> surviving, say that, surviving, surviving. Your, own your own vision. vision. And I guess you should personalize it for it to be planted correctly. Say surviving, surviving my, own my own vision. vision. Say it one more time. Surviving, surviving my own, my own vision. vision. Brother, and I show you a, a road map. Last Sunday, I'm not going to teach through it. Again, I just want you to see it. If you have a, a cell phone you desire to take this opportunity to take a picture of that, that would be appropriate. God has given us a, a road map. We are, not, we are not orphans. We are not destitute. In the land, we are not destitute in his, in his kingdom. He cares for us. And the way that we know that in this season is that he gives us a word. He gives us some instructions. He don't leave us hanging in the kingdom. He gives us a word. He gives us some in instructions so that we can build our, our faith upon it. Amen? Amen. I'm not going to teach it. I'll just speak over it really quick. I'll be teaching in just a, a second. No, it's going to happen. Believe it in Jesus' name. <laughs> God has called us to be kingly priests that forgive. We are to we are to move. We are. We've been talking already. There's been much prophecy already this morning. We're on track prophetically. We're in the right lane prophetically. There's already been much prophecy already. I heard it from my office this morning. We are to give. We are to be free of offense. And so we, we've, I've already heard some prayers. We, we are being transformed by the renewing of our minds. God is, God is washing us with his up. He's purging us, making us white as snow. I've already heard. I believe it was prophet that said we need, or maybe it was minister Nick that said we need to be, we need to request to be clean. They would say, give, give me a clean heart. Yes. Renew the right spirit within me. And so that, that, that's a request. We need to make a decision to be clean. We need to make a decision to be free of offense. God's expectation is that we're going to operate in, as mature saints in, in 2019. What that means is that when God begins to operate, there, there are, God is a threefold God. There is the operation of the Father. There is the, the, the grace and administration of his son, Jesus Christ. And there are the manifestations and gifts of the Holy Ghost. And so we know that the way that God the Father moves is through his operation. And he's going to operate in such a way in 2019 as if we are mature saints. He's going to operate as if we've been equipped. He's going to operate as if we've been given instructions. He's going to operate, speak to us as if he's given us the road map and he expects us to read it and use it to navigate our lives by faith. That's how he's going to operate. Does that make sense? Number three, we'll be expected to function individually. Point at yourself and say, that means me. We're going to be expected to function individually as if the kingdom of God is is your inheritance. In 2019, you're not looking for anyone else to own the kingdom. You got to get your own kingdom. Amen. My father used to say, get yourself some. <laughs> Leave mine alone. Number four, we have to be emotionally ready to not look back. Prophet broke it down last Sunday about Lot's wife and how she looked back and changed to a pillar of salt. She was not ready to forget what was behind her and strain toward that which was what? Ahead. ahead of her. And so God is going to look for us to be emotionally ready. If, if you're like me, I know this doesn't apply to, to all of us, but if you're like me, you have some, some spiritual baggage, some spiritual wounds, some, some emotional hurts. The, the Bible calls it being heartbroken. Jesus came to heal the the broken hearted, I know the rest of you, your heart has never been broken. But if you like me, you have some emotional baggage and you're tempted to bring that over with you into 2019. And what the Lord is saying, don't bring that with you over in, in 2019. Drop the bags. Leave them, just leave them on the carousel at the airport. You don't need them no more. 
Where you're going, there's already clothes, there's already houses that you did not build, there's already vineyards that you not plant. Don't bring any of that stuff with you into 2019. Amen? Amen. All right, and lastly, go on and become what? Great. great. It's, it, it's, it's okay now to go on and become great. This is about, some of us have a fear of failure and something that we need to preach more about. Some of us have a fear of success. That's even worse. Some of us not only have a fear of failure, but when we think about what we might have, who we might have to be in order to be successful, that scares us too. And so the Lord said, go on and become what? Great. 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 All right. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Flip over into that in your Bible. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Let me get over there. We started off many messages with this scripture. God has asked me to, to renew this scripture in our minds as we transition from 2018 to 2019. Romans chapter 1, verse 17 says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. How is it revealed? So if, if I want to know the righteousness of God, righteousness means God's way of being correct. Righteousness means God's way of being right. If I'm looking for that, I'm trying to find that. The, the scripture says, well, there's a way that is going to be what? Revealed. There's a way that is going to be revealed unto you. The way that it is revealed is from faith to faith. Faith. And so that's very simple. We've talked about this at the Kingdom Advancement Center before. For those of you who are visiting, what that means is that in in, in, a, in past seasons, we believed that God would do something for us in the past and we released our faith. We, we, we believed on the promises of God. We believed He would do something for us and, and He did that. He brought us out of darkness into the light and because God did that, now we're moving on to a new position of what? Faith. Of faith. In other words, that, that's over with now. I believe for my healing in the past. I believe for my finances in the past. I believe God was going to give me a new house in the past. I already got a new house now. Now I'm tired of cleaning up the house that I was believing for in the past. <laughs> I'm tired of paying the mortgage on that which I was believing for when? In the past. I, I don't want to mop the floor in this big old dog on the house the Lord gave me when? In the past. And so what have I done by doing that though? By doing that I have moved from faith to what? Faith. Now I need some now I need some faith to, to cut the grass in this new house I got now. Amen? Now I need some faith to keep getting up and going to work in the morning for this larger mortgage that I have in the house that I was believing God for when? In the past. And so I have moved from faith to what? Faith. faith. The, the word of God that I used to get the house is no longer relevant in this new position of what? Faith. Now I need a word of God to maintain the blessing that I'm in now. And so the Bible says, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from when? From faith to what? Faith. faith. And so what, what you need to begin to get, you can begin to write this down. The faith that you used in 2018 if you understand this scripture, is not going to work then in 2019. In 2019, I heard someone begin to teach about it. I began, it was, I believe it was Minister Nikki who began to, to speak about it, or maybe it was Pastor Crystal. Y'all prophesied a lot this morning. Hallelujah. And so somebody began to say, you need to get back in the word again. Faith is the word of God that, that, we, that we know, that we understand, that we believe and then we step out on it. And so some people believe that faith is blind. And so we know by the word of God, faith is not blind. There is no such thing in the scriptures as blind faith. In other words, we're using faith as a stop gap for everything that we don't understand. It's a mystery. And so whenever there's a mystery, then we begin to say, okay, you need faith for that. But faith is not a stop gap for everything that is a mystery in our lives. That's not what faith is. Faith is, uh, faith is something that we use because we do have understanding about the answers to the mysteries. Those answers are in the what? In the word of God. And so because I see those solutions, because I see what is revealed by the word of God, then that allows me to go from faith to what? Faith. And so it's, it's, it's not a mystery what God wants me to do. God has already spoken prophetically and told me what it is he wants me to what? Do. Now my job is to begin to study 
My job is to begin uh, to analyze. My job is to begin to understand the word of God that he's already given me. And then I begin to walk in it accordingly. As I do that, I am moved. It is revealed to me from faith to what? Faith. faith. And the scripture says those that are right, those that are correct, the just shall live how? By faith. Is this, raise your hand if this is making sense to you Amen. this morning. All right, let's move on to Habakkuk. Or Habakkuk chapter 2. <laughs> Habakkuk is in the Old Testament. If you cannot find it, use the table of contents. and Micah and Ezekiel and Jeremiah and Ecclesiastes and Isaiah and Amos and Nahum. If you go past all that, you'll see in the Old Testament is the book, the prophet Habakkuk. Chapter 2. Sister Kelly said she, y'all hurry up. She read the word. <laughs> Habakkuk chapter 2. Verse 1. Say amen when you got it. Amen. All right, y'all gotta y'all y'all gotta talk to me this morning. Don't take this silence over into 2019. <laughs> Let that go. Habakkuk chapter two verse one. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will will say unto me. I have a I have an expectation from 2019, 2018. 2018 was a year of elevated expectation, was it not? And so in verse 1, we see we're on the top of the tower. We're elevated. Yes, we are. And we have an expectation that God is going to say something to us. I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am what? Reproved or when I am corrected. Verse 2. And the Lord answered me and he said, this is how you should do it. You should write the vision and make it plain upon what? That they may run that read it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall do what? Speak. And not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not do what? Tarry. Right, and those of you who are prophetic, which should be all of us. Those of you who are a, a prophetic people know that you've been receiving prophetic words year after year after year after year. If you wait on it long enough, you know it's going to come to pass just as it has been what? Has it been prophesied to you? Verse 4, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by what? Faith. Faith. So we, we learned this principle before at the Kingdom Advancement Center. The Holy Ghost wanted me to remind you, you need this principle again in 2019. You're going to need this principle more in 2019 than you ever needed it before. The spiritual work that you've been doing by following that which has been prophesied concerning you is going to begin to manifest itself more than ever before in 2019. And so what the Holy Spirit wants to me to remind you is do not forsake the prophetic principles that you have learned. Do not become slack do not become lazy. Do not become disenchanted. If the longer you say, you have a tendency to become a little bit disenchanted with the ways of Jesus. You're tired now. You didn't see Jesus do a few things now, and so you're beginning to get a little bit disenchanted. You've heard the word before. You're looking for a new word. Renew means to look back over that which you already knew and execute that. Say amen. amen. So you need to get renewed on this word. This teaching is very simple. Visitors, are you with me? How are you here? <laughs> this teaching is, is very simple. When you receive a, a prophetic word which comes to someone by vision, what should you do with it? You should write it down. You should write it down so that you can begin to read and meditate on it. That is a sign to the Holy Ghost. That is a sign to the heavens. That is a sign to Jesus Christ, your king, that you are taking what you heard seriously. That's what that is. Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of 
God. And so when you write your prophetic word down, you're sealing that which you heard. Amen. That means you have an intention to walk in, to manifest and believe and receive that which you heard prophetically. So the scripture said, write the vision. Make it plain upon what? Amen. Table so that you can use it, so that you can run with it later when you do what? Read it. The Bible says, if you if you participate in this activity, then now you are correct. You participate in this activity, now you are right. If you participate in this activity, now you are just. The scripture says doing this means the just shall live by what? Faith. Faith, Faith is the word of God that we receive from the scriptures. It is the word of God that we receive prophetically when we take it seriously. The word of God that has been spoken into our lives. The way that you do that in the scriptures is by writing it down so that they may run who read it. When you begin to do that, then you are beginning to walk by what? Faith. Faith. All right. God's righteousness is revealed. Faith to faith. All right. Take a picture of this. Write this down. A vision represents the visual representation of the things God desires for his people to possess. The kingdom of God is about possession. If you're familiar with the Bible, you know that God is a God of possession. God told Abram, get up, move from your father's house, and go into the land which I will do what? Give unto you. Into the land that I will show you. It's a vision. I want you to see something because I want you to do what? Possess it. That, oh, come on with me this morning. That is the purpose of a vision. The, the purpose of a vision is so that God can show you something with the intent that what he shows you, you are going to possess it. By doing that, you cause his kingdom to come and you cause his will to be done on earth as it is where? It has earth. The, the purpose of earth is so that there can be a material manifestation of the possession of God in heaven. That's why you're here. Oh, that was good. You missed that. Amen. That's why you're here. Why are we still here on earth? The reason why you're still on earth is because earth is the material representation of the spiritual possession of God. That's why you're here. You're here because God wants to show you something. And then when you get your eyes on that, you can say, oh, man, that's good. I like that. Music. So that you can begin to do what? Possess it. Follow the patriarchs of the Bible. It doesn't matter whether it's Noah. It doesn't matter whether it's Abraham. It doesn't matter whether it's Isaac and Jacob. It doesn't matter whether it's King Saul or King David or Solomon or, or, or Nehemiah. What God had them to do was show them the vision and then their job was to figure out what they needed to do in their generation to possess it. Then it is a picture or representation of the destination God has for his people. Amen. That's what a, a vision is. I'm feeling better now. Isn't that good? Amen. Then it is a picture. You, you got to the picture of it. What happened? Yeah, yeah, to the yeah, farmer. Y'all did already? Yeah. And, and the vision is a picture or representation of the destination. I want you to write that down. Uh, write that down. I want you to get that. Write the vision. Write this down. I want you to write it too, though. Lest you forget about the picture on your phone when you get home. A vision is a picture or representation of the destination. God has for his people. God desires to take you somewhere. That's what he wants to do. You get that sister saying, God desires to take you somewhere. God is not satisfied with where you are now. 
And so his desire is for you to move from faith to faith. He desires to take you somewhere. The, yeah. God's way of getting you from where you are now to where he desires to take you is that he'll show you a picture of it. Behold, this is where I want to, to take you. God has shown Minister Nikki Africa. He's shown her the Caribbean. And so she always itching to get there. Because once God gets, gives you a picture of something, it's stuck in your mind. It's there to irritate you. It's there to motivate you to get from here to there. We went to the Bahamas on the cruise. I've been playing ever since we got off the boat. I'm like, man, we got to get back to the Lord. A vision. Hallelujah. Go over to Numbers chapter 13. Let's talk about the vision. The purpose of a vision is so that you can possess the land. That's the purpose of a vision. Am I going too fast? No. Numbers 13. Say amen. amen. When you got that. Now in 2019, don't say amen if you're not there yet. <laughs> Numbers 13. Thank you. I want you to bring honesty into 2019. <laughs> Numbers 13. What happened to the Amen. Amen. Y'all hurry up. I got the young people's attention just for a little bit. <laughs> Numbers 13. <coughs> and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, All of these scriptures will not be on the screen. Verse 2. Send out men that they may search the what? Land, land of Canaan. For those of you who are, are Bible scholars, you know the land of Canaan is what the Bible calls the promised land. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall you send a man, every one a ruler among them. Verse 3, this is not up there, just roll with me in your Bible. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. And these were their names of the tribe of Reuben. I'm not going to read them all. Y'all look at their names real quick. Take note of Caleb in verse 6. Mm -hmm. Take note of Oshia in verse 8. Caleb in verse 6. Oshia in verse 8. Are you with me? Yes. Go down to verse 16. Verse 16, these are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the what? Land. And Moses called Oshia the son of Nun, Joshua. Or he called him Yahshua. That's in English, Joshua. Or in Greek, Jesus. All right, this is not Jesus of Nazareth. This is Jesus, the son of Nun, or Joshua, the author of the book of Joshua in the Old Testament. Are you okay with that? Amen. Verse 17. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get you up this way southward and go up unto the mountain and see the what? Land. In other words, I want you to get up vision yes, yes, yes. go up this way southward go up into the mountain verse 18 and see the what land. land what it is and the people that dwell therein whether they be strong or weak few or what Amen. and what the land is that they dwell in whether it be good or what Amen. and what the cities they 
be that dwell in, whether in tents or in strong Oh, I mean, we don't know. I mean, they could be strong. Could be not. <laughs> Who's the same? Go see. Verse 20. What the land is, whether it be fat or what? Lean. Lean. Whether they be wood therein or not. And be ye of good courage and bring of the fruit of the land. This, for those, for those of you who are our Bible scholars. This is the apostolic plan. If you're looking for an apostolic plan, this is what it looks like. Verse 20, what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, be of good courage, bring up the fruit of the land. Now, the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Rahab as men came to Hamath. And they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron, where Ahimah and some folks' names we don't know how to pronounce no more. <laughs> now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And they came into the brook of Eshcol and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes. And they bare it between two upon a staff. And they brought up the pomegranates and of the figs. The place was called the brook of Eshcol because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence and they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. It took them 40 days to search out the land. The land was so vast. Are you with me still? Verse 26. And they went and came to Moses. This is after 40 days of apostolically espying out the land. The scripture says, and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh. You'll see this in a, in a later scripture as Kadesh Barnea. To Kadesh and brought back word unto them. Because when you get a vision of something, yeah. when you see the place that God desires for you to possess, that will produce a what? Vision. A word. Mm -hmm. You see this in the scripture. Mm -hmm. Roll back unto him and to all the congregation and show them the, mm -hmm. the fruit of the what? Mm -hmm. Land. What was, what was the word that they brought back to Moses? Verse 27, underline this in your Bible. They told him and said, we came unto the land. We saw the vision. We have a, a word. We came unto the land whither you sent us and surely it flows. Surely, say surely. surely. And surely it flows with milk and what? Honey. And this is the what? Fruit of it. Alright, so I, I want you to get this I want to make sure you get the vision. I want to make sure you understand. Since the Christi out of vision went down. They saw the vision. The vision caused them to come back with a word. This word was 40 days in the making. Amen? Amen. When they came back with the word, they said to Moses, We came into the land whither you were sent. Them. That's apostolic. And surely, without doubt, without question, it flows with what? <laughs> Milk and honey. And, and as a matter of fact, this is not just our opinion. This is not even just our testimony. Here, this is scientific though. Here yeah. is the fruit there. What? Oh, uh, here's the lamb. Here is the fruit there. All right. The, the, the first thing that I... I want you to get in your bosom. The first thing I want you to get this down within you before we go into 2019. How many how many days we got now? One day. Dangity day. <laughs> we have 24. Is it just 24 hours or more? A little bit more. A little more. First thing I want you to get into the land before you go into 2019, before you begin to set your eyes on what it is God wants you to, to see. 
is that the first thing I want you to get is that it is possible for anyone, though, to see the vision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's more important, right? Please get this there. It is impossible for almost anyone to see the vision. In fact, it is, it is possible for almost anyone to see that the vision is good. Do you see that? They sent out 12 spies. All 12 spies came back in agreement, in agreement that the vision is good. They verified the vision. This is good for us to do. It's a land where you sent us. Surely there is no doubt as we've been hearing by your servants, the prophets, for, for years, for decades, for centuries, even almost 2,000 years now, going back to their father Abraham, surely it flows with what? Milk and honey. And this is the what? Fruit of it. Go down to verse 28. Nevertheless, the people be what? Strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Those of you who have been in HD 350 know we're talking about the giants. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. And the Hittites and the Jebusites. And the Amorites dwell in the what? Mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the what? Sea. And by the coast of Jordan. It's possible for everyone to see the vision. However, what you need to know in 2019 is that not everyone will interpret the vision the same way. That's right. That's right. It is possible for people to see that the vision is good. Yes. This is good. We prophesied about it. We're, we're, we're even verifying that we're now able to see that the way that we've been told to go is good. It's right. That's right. This is okay. Look, it's, it's here. The land is good. Surely, it flows with milk and honey. This here is the fruit of it. As a matter of fact, we're not even looking for any signs, wonders, and miracles anymore. The here is the what? The fruit of it. It's right here. Uh -huh. We don't need any more proof now at this moment by signs, wonders, and miracles that what we have been believing for is true. Yeah. We have it. We've experienced it. Matter of fact, Moses, we brought you back some fruit so that you can know that what we've seen is true. Are you looking in the scriptures? Yes. Verse 30. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at what? And do what? Possess. That's the purpose of a vision. Did we not learn that? Yes. Stop playing. Let's go back. <laughs> vision is the, the, the visual representation of the thing or things God desires for his people to do what? It is a picture or representation of the destination God has for his what? See, I thought I was just making it up on my own. So based on that, Caleb still the people. This is nice. Here's the fruit. We see that the, the children of the Anak are there. All the Ites, the Malachites, the Jebusites, the Hittites, all them. Who cares? Caleb still the people before Moses and said, based on what we just saw, the vision, let us go up what? At once and let's, let's move from vision to what? Possession. That's the, the goal. Why? For we are well able to overcome it. How many of you are with Caleb? Let us go up at once and possess it. I saw that. I saw the Amalekites and the Jebusites uh, and the Canaanites and all the haters. I saw them. And I said, here's the fruit here. Moses, 
Uh, Y'all been telling us for years it's a land flowing with milk and honey. We saw that. Dang, this is good. Therefore, let us go up and do what? Let's do this at once. Verse 31. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against this what? For they are what? Stronger than what? We. All right. I, I try to give it to you slow. I hope you begin to get it now. Just because there is a vision, just because you begin to, to write down the vision, just because people begin to see the vision, and they begin to see that the vision is what? Good. In fact, they begin to, to verify that all that we have been learning, all that we have been equipped with so far is, is good. They're equipped now. They were able for 40 days to go and espy out the land. But, but in all of that, 10 of them, though they had the fruit right in front of them, oh, I see that it. 10 of them, though the fruit was there, Though, though, though they no longer needed to be convinced that the word of God that they had been receiving for generations was true, they had the fruit in their hands. They carried it from the promised land and set it before the feet of that great deliverer Moses. Though they had the proof of it, ten of them were not convinced that they could move from vision to possession. Come on, come on. We be not able to go up against this people, for they are what? Stronger than what? All right. Go over to Hebrews chapter 3. I'm talking about moving from faith to I'm talking about what we need to do to get from 2018 to 2019. I'm still talking about how to survive your own what? Vision. Hebrews. Hebrews is in the New Testament. I'm going to get you there. It's going to happen. Hebrews. Chapter 3. Let's start in verse 16. Come on, Sister Kelly, let's do it. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 16. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. <laughs> But with whom was he grieved forty what years? Was it not with them that had sin, whose carcasses fell in the what? Witness. If you know your your Bible, because the the ten spies that went said that they were they said later said we are as grasshoppers in what their sight. We cannot take it. We cannot overcome it. They are too big. And so because of that, they wandered in the wilderness 40 years. If you know your Bible, you know that God allowed them to dwell in the wilderness for 40 years. That was one year for every day that they witnessed the vision. For every day that they witnessed the vision, for every day that they gathered fruit from the land, God caused them, Brother Stanley, to dwell in the wilderness 40 years for 40 what? Days. Verse 18. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his what? Rest. Or into the, the promised land. But to them that believe what? Not. Verse 19. Underline this. Write this down. Put sparkles around it. <laughs> So we see that they could not enter in. We're, we're talking about going from 2018 and entering, crossing over into 2019. So, so we see that they could not enter 
in because of what? Unbelief. Now I want you to I want you to get this, y'all Snapchat this, Instagram this. Do what y'all do. Just because you physically go into 2019 at the stroke of midnight on New Year's Eve does not mean that you are entering into 2019. Oh, that's good. Are you with me? I want you to get this. Just, just because your physical body and, and your job and your spouse and your kids wake up on New Year's and see your watch transfer over to January the 1st does not mean that you are entering in to 2019. It does not mean that you are entering into the Lord's rest. It does not mean that you are entering into the promise of God for you for 2019. So we see that they could not enter in because of what? Unbelief. Unbelief. Are you with me this morning? Because entering into 2019 means that you have made a decision before it arrives to drop the baggage of 2018. What it means is that you made a decision to drop the unforgiveness that you accumulated in 2018. It means that you have to make a decision to drop the offense that attached itself to you in 2018. Without doing that, you will not be able to enter into his rest in 2019. Because you just find yourself spinning your wheels in cleanup mode for all of 2019. Oh, come on, Dr. Johnson. There, there'll be opportunities for you to step into in 2019, but the stress strain and anxiety of 2018 will keep you from it. Okay. Stress, strain, and anxiety of 2018 will cause you to be too double-minded to take hold of the new mm. in 2019. Yeah. You'll be still meditating on that. You'll still be complaining, murmuring about that. Yeah. Go forward one verse. Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 1. What you're trying to tell us, Jesus, is in the Word. Amen. Let us therefore fear. Meaning, take heed. Don't let this word slip you hearing this morning. Lest a promise be left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Amen. Are you getting this, Sister Carol? For unto us was the gospel preached, yeah. as well as unto them. But the word preached did not do what? Profit. Profit them. Because if you remember 2018, the Lord was supposed to teach us to do what? Profit. Profit. It was the year of expansion. Yeah. The year of elevated yeah. expectation. Mm -hmm. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not what? Prophet did. Why not? Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Help Lord. This is a good word, sister. Are you listening? Yes. Yes. No words, no, no, no matter what's what's happening to me, the scripture said the rain falls on the Judge. The just and the unjust. It falls on the evil and the what? Good. Good. But the, the thing that separates the, the just from the unjust, the thing that separates the evil from the good is that the good no longer, no matter what happens, be it good or evil, they mix it though with what? Faith. Faith. The just say, no, I, I, I saw that. I saw you just slap me. I saw that. I saw that. I felt it on my face. However, I'm going to mix this with faith though. Right. Because what I'm believing is that though you meant that slap for evil, God is getting ready to do music for what? Yeah. Good. Right. 
That's all they do. Word preaching, not proper them, not being mixed with faith in them that what? Heard it. For for we which have what? Believe. Say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. For we which have believed do enter into what? Rest. Rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest. If. If if was a, y'all know how it goes. (laughs) Although the works were finished from the foundation of the work. In other words, God has done something for you. He has finished it. He has completed it. He has completed your marriage before the foundation of the world. He has completed your prosperous finances before the foundation of the world. He has completed your children's education before the foundation of the world. He's causing your legacy and your lineage to go to your children and children's children successfully. Even though it may not seem so right now. He's causing that to happen. He did it. He finished that work before the foundation of the world. If you believe that, the scripture says, you shall enter into his what? Rest. Rest. All right. Okay. You got it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> go back to jo- go to Joshua chapter 14. Let's talk about what we got to do. Yes, yes. Here it is. I set you up for yeah, you Now, you got to make a decision. Uh, Sister Kelly said you got just a little bit more <laughs> than 24 hours to get your mind wrapped around this. Joshua. Joshua is back toward the beginning. Of the New Testament. Of the Old Testament, sorry. Joshua chapter 14, back toward the beginning of the Old Testament. Go past the the Pentateuch. Go past the Torah. Get to the book of, of Joshua. Yes, Joshua. Y'all say, Amen. 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 All right, come on, Sister Manny. Let's get it. Joshua chapter 14, verse 6. Let's start there. Is that all right? All right. Then then the children of Judah came unto Yahshua in Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said unto him, Hold on, uh, Brother Joshua. You know the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, (laughs) concerning me and thee, back over in Kadesh. You know what he said. I told you back over in Kadesh, Uh when they went to espy out the land Uh for 40 days, they saw the vision. They came back in the fruit that was at Kadesh. I warned you earlier that Kadesh is Kadesh Barnea. Joshua, hold on a minute. You know the thing that the Lord said unto Moses. You was there. Stop playing with Jesus. (laughs) The man of God concerning me and you, Brother Joshua, in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses... The servant of the Lord sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land. I want you to picture when they sent the 12 spies, <laughs> Joshua and Caleb were two, and then there were 10 more. Yeah. When the Lord sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land, I brought him word again as it was in my word. Part. What was the word that was back over in, in Brother? We can take it. Caleb talked. He said, hey, let us go up one at once and do what? That was the word. That was in his heart. That's right. Brother Caleb saying, Joshua, you know. I brought in word as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, say nevertheless. Nevertheless, my, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people do what? But I wholly 
follow the what? Lord, my what? God. Okay. Let's let's get this. I need ten volunteers. Come on, sister Ben. Come on, sister Sam. Come on, sister Rosie. Y'all stand. Y'all stand over this way. Yeah. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Come on. I don't know if I want to be in this number. <laughs> <laughs> this might not be One, good two, over here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Come on, Sister Victoria. 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 Come on, Sister one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes? Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land. You, you was forty years old when it happened. <laughs> and I brought him word again as it was in my work. All right, so if you were forty years old when we first saw the land, and it's been 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. One year for every day that you saw the land. How old are you now? 80. <laughs> so this, this conversation is taking place between Joshua and Caleb, who are both at least now 80 years old. Why did it, why did it happen, Brother Caleb? Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. Now what, what I want you to realize scripturally is that when Caleb is saying that these are his brothers, this is not figurative. These are his real brothers that went with him. These are his cousins. This is someone from each of the tribes of Israel who are his literal descendants from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. These are his kinfolk. These are his cousins. These are literally Caleb's cousins. Are you with me? Right. And, and, and these are the people that went with Caleb and, and Joshua to, to espy. They look nice, though. <laughs> they went with Caleb and, and Joshua to, to espy out the land. But what I want you to realize, Brother Caleb, is that these are also the people who were walking your kinfolk. <laughs> These are the folks that God has given you to work with. You have to love these people here. Whether you want to or not. These people share the same DNA with you. Yes, yes. If we go to the lab and get their blood and get your blood and put it under the microscope and begin to analyze it, you will begin to see that these are the people before the foundation of the world that God ordained to walk out this faith walk with you. That's what Caleb is saying. Caleb is saying, nevertheless, my brother, my brothers, that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly follow what? The Lord. Let's look. Y'all stay right there. We got 40 years of following. <laughs> Verse 9. And Moses swore in that day, this is still Caleb speaking, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine what? Yeah. Inheritance. And thy children's what? Forever. Because thou hast wholly followed the Lord thy, my what? Yeah. And now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, Amen. these forty and five years. Oh. Even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day four score and five years what? Oh, and yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses was. Now, I want you to get this picture. I want you to imagine that God promised you something. You've been, you've been waiting on your marriage. You've been waiting on your, your house. You've been waiting on your finances to get right. You've been waiting on your education. God promised it to you. You, you saw it. You tasted it. You, had, you saw the vision. And that day you saw the vision. Your mouth began to water. 
Your, your expectation began to be elevated that day that you could go into the what? Promised land. But because of your brothers, you can't get in though. You're ready to get in, but they're not ready to get in. Now, now, I want you to get this picture in your mind. For 40 years, you've been dreaming about this day. For 40 years, you can see the mountain, the Hittites are up there, and the Jebusites are up there, and they're just skipping around <laughs> your possession, having a good old time. The enemy has your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And for 40 years, you've been waiting to defeat the enemy. You've been dreaming about how you're going to give them the beat down so that you can take with you your wife and your sons and daughters into the land and into the possession that God has, has promised you. But the reason why you cannot get in is because those people that God has given you to love are not ready to go in. <laughs> Caleb called them his brother. Now, I want you to imagine that you're Caleb. And what you are being asked to do for the next 40 years, now 45 now. Yeah. What you are being asked to do for the next 40 years is wander around in a circle. And I want you to imagine that once a year you get the opportunity to see that mountain again. The Jebusites are still up there. The Hittites are still up there. And they're just marching around, you know, having a good old time. <laughs> on your possession. You were ready to go in that day. Amen. You saw the vision and and your your brothers, those who God has given you the love. <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> have mercy. Have, have decided for you that they are not ready to go in. Now they don't need any more proof though. They don't need a sign, wonder, or a miracle. They've been equipped They've been taught. And matter of fact, it was them, not you, that brought back the fruit and said it before <laughs> Moses' feet. Yeah. We have it now. It's here. We believe it just as you say it is here. However, we're not ready to do what? Exactly. Take the land. So for 40 years, once a year, you get to wander around and look at what is yours. Mm -hmm. For 40 years, you get to go around and, and look at what God has for you. You know, you've been singing about it. What God has for me is for me. You've been singing about it. You've been worshiping about it. You've been preaching about it. You've been talking about it. And so now, Jehovah God, your provider, is now causing you every year for 40 years to walk around and look at what you could have had. He's causing you now for 40 years to, to, to desire, to slobber over. Your mouth is, is watering. Every time for 40 years you see this mountain, what's beginning to happen in your heart. Every year for 40 years, you're starting to get a little bit more bitter than you were on year one. You're starting to have a little bit more unforgiveness by year two. By year three, you're starting to have a little bit more resentment. By, by, by year seven, a little bit more hate is starting to, to overtake you. By, by year nine, you can still speak in tongues, but you can't speak to your <laughs> Because as the, the years go on, remember there were 40 years for every day that they, that they spied out the the land. Now, y'all can be seated. Give them a hand. <laughs> what are you what are you saying, Apostle? I'm gonna wrap it up for you in a bowl. Are you ready? What you cannot do in 2019, 
is being so upset with these people over here yeah. that when the time comes for you to actually possess the land, you have too much hate, too much offense, too much unforgiveness, too much wrath, too much anger against your brothers, though. Yeah, yeah. That you no longer have enough faith, you no longer have enough intention or fortitude to enter into the land. Watch what Caleb says. This is how you overcome offense. And Moses swear on that day saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thy inheritance and thy children's forever. Because you have wholly followed the Lord your God. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive. And he said, these 40 years and 5 years, even, even since the Lord spake his word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, Lord, I am this day four score and five years old, and yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. Yes. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now. For war. For war. Yeah. <laughs> Both to go out and to do what? Come in. Come in. Now, what you cannot do is spend the next 365 days yeah. fantasizing about how it would have been yeah. had your brothers been ready yeah. to take the vision when you were ready. Yeah. Right, right, right. Are you with me yes. this morning? Yes. What, what you cannot do is waste the next 300 days. 65 days meditating on how it might have been had you went back to school 10 years ago. Come on. What you cannot do for the next 365 days is, is meditate on how it might have been had you got married 20 years ago. Are you listening this morning? Yes. What you cannot do is meditate for the next 365 days how you might be positioned had you invested 6% in your 401k 10 years ago. You cannot spend the next 365 days upset at those who cannot see the vision when you saw it. In fact, I want to give you a little bit of, 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 of Holy Ghost wisdom for the next 365 days. It is that you should be careful in the first place who you share the vision with. Right. Because not even Moses himself got into the promised land. That's right. Did you know that? Yes. Moses, even himself, did not get into the promised land. He became bitter. Moses was not able to survive his own vision. Moses was called to be a great deliverer. And he delivered the people out of the land of Egypt. Yet he himself did not eat of the fruit of his own vision right, right. because he was too angry mm -hmm. he had too much anxiety at the people that God had chosen to walk by faith with him on this journey called life mm -hmm. are you with me yes. he had too much resentment he felt too rejected by those people that God ordained to be around him to walk by faith and so Moses was not able to survive what it is that God showed him. He only himself saw it from afar off. Yeah. And the question that I want you to, 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 to fix in your mind this morning is, will you be able to see and survive the vision that God has given you? If 
your vision even too heavy for you to bear. And you believe that it's so heavy that you're going to prevent yourself from getting into it, even yourself. What I want you to fix in 2019, you got how many hours of that? <laughs> before you go into 2019, before you go into rest, the thing that you need to fix is who you allow to see the vision with you in the first place. I want you to take responsibility for who you allow to see the vision with you in the first place. I want you to fix who you are agreeing to partner with to see the vision. Because not everyone who sees the vision with you is going to mix it with faith. And the question is, who you agree to see the vision with you are they're going to cause you to miss the vision yourself. What we are to avoid in 2019 is wandering around in the wilderness. Looking at the possession that God has for us because people can see the vision. People understand the vision. People have tasted the fruit of the vision, but yet they're rejecting the vision. Are you with me this morning? Amen. The question is, what is the vision that God has given to you? And you need to be careful about who you share it with. You need to be careful about who you allow to see the vision with you. Because not everyone who sees the vision is able to walk out the vision with you. Joshua 14, verse 12. <coughs> Now therefore give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakims were there and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me. Then I shall be able to do what? As the Lord was. Said, verse 13, and Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Hebron, for an inheritance. If you know your, your Bible, you know that King David first began to rule in Hebron. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, unto this day. Why? Because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron before was Kerjad Arba, which Arba was a great man among the Anakims, and the land had rest from war. This is part B. I want you to add this to your roadmap from last week. Number one, take time to write out the vision for 2019. Don't delay. Don't skip it. Don't put it off for later. Take time to write out the vision God has given you for 2019. What is the revealed will of God in your life for 2019? Discuss that with your apostolic council, whoever that may be. If you don't know what an apostolic council is, See Brother Gary in the AV booth, good to see it. Number two, be careful, say careful. careful. Be careful who you take with you to see the vision. Make sure you partner only, say only. Only, only with those that are full of faith and not unbelief. A avoid a self-imposed wilderness experience because of your own fear. Did you pick that up? Mm -hmm. Avoid a self-imposed wilderness experience. Meaning not God is not causing you to wander in the wilderness. You're causing yourself right, yeah. to wander in the wilderness because of your own what? Fear. Unbelief and, and pessimism mm -hmm. about everything that happens. 
Renew your faith. Say renew. renew. Renew your faith for the things of God in 2019. Yes. We accomplished a lot in 2018. Amen. That was good. It ministered to us. It tutored us. It blessed us. We, we, we have the fruit of it. We're sitting in it. That's good. Let that go. Mm -hmm. Look at your neighbor and say, let that go. Let that go. Don't spend the next 365 days looking at what you accomplished in 2018. That's right. <laughs> Did you get that? Yeah. Don't spend the next 365 days just walking around the new car you got in 2018. <laughs> Don't do that. Get in that joker. And let it take you to the destination, though, in 2019 that God has for you. Are you listening? Renew. Say renew again. Renew. renew your faith for the things of God in 2000. I know you wrote a book in 2018. That's nice. Don't spend 2019 reading it. Saying this, this is nice. But write another book in 2019. <laughs> Don't spend 2019 just walking around the house God gave you in 2018. That's nice. Hallelujah. God bless you. With that, go find you another house and get it as rental property in 2019. Amen. Ask yourself, what does the word of God say concerning the new year? Find that out. Take the next 24 hours. Get your, your Bible out. Find you someone who is not allergic to the Bible. <laughs> In the next 24 hours and ask him, what does the word say? Amen. Find you someone who is not spiritually anemic. You're going to open up the Bible and then they're going to leave the room. <laughs> that happens sometimes among Christian folks. We get the Bible out, people start leaving the room. Like, why are you allergic to the age you saved? Age you Christian? Those are the kinds of people who are going to see the vision with you, and then they're going to cause you to wander around yeah. in 2019, afraid to be successful. Right. Mm -hmm. Renew your faith for the things of God in, in 2019. What does the word of God say concerning what? Yeah. The new year. Number five. Do not be too proud or bitter to recover intentionally from the delayed fulfillment of the promise of God. Did you hear what I just said? Don't be too proud and bitter for what happened in 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Don't be too bitter about what people didn't agree with you about for the last 20 years. Don't be too bitter about what, what people did not see for the last 20 years. That now that the Lord is finally saying, turn you northward, here's your mountain, to say, give me my mountain. Don't be so bitter over the last 10 men who didn't want you for the last 20 years. And then your knight in fine shining armor finally shows up. And you too bitter. I'm not, I, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna treat him like I blessed the last man. He didn't do me right. You know. <laughs> but he's gonna try to open the door for you in 2000. I can open my own door. <laughs> Try to pay for your dinner until I don't need nobody to pay for my dinner. <laughs> 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 That's because you don't have no candidates yet. <laughs> and the question is, are you going to be too jaded when your candidate 
show up to open up your heart enough to get one more person the opportunity to work. Do not be too proud or bitter to recover, say intentionally. Caleb said, Give me this mountain. I am as strong today as I was over 40 years ago. Don't be too proud. I don't want to mount that. You're going to hit your butt on this mountain. They should have gave me this promotion. Like, you better take it this year. Amen. <laughs> Say intentionally. Intentionally. Don't be too proud or bitter or jaded. To recover that which you've been wandering around looking at for the last 40 years and then you're going to miss it again. Come on, that's good. Come on. A delay is not a denial. Amen. You heard that before? While you was Baptist for the last 40 years, you should have that. <laughs> and lastly, we must learn to recover gracefully. Amen. Did you get that? Yes. We must learn to recover gracefully. Yes. I mean, without it, without it too, without an attitude. Without a clap back. Give me that. This is bad. We must learn to recover how. Gracefully. Stand right where you are. 